Here is a summary of what has happened so far. In Chapter 1, Gillig ventured into the abandoned Otter Halt, finding his way through the dark and into the bunny burrow. There, the otter had fallen through a hole, down a slide, and into the waters under Kotir Castle below. In the current chapter of the adventure, Gloomer the evil Great Rat had gotten stuck in a tunnel in a cave while escaping from Stormfin the Pike. Chapter 3 The Chase Gillig the Otter, relaxing peacefully on the surface of Kotir Cavern Lake, dreamily remembered. Skipper had given a good-natured chuckle and slapped a paw on Gillig's shoulder. What we need is a mate who'll sneak into Kotir and retrieve Verduga's scroll, so we can show it to the Thousand Eyes troops. The war will end and there will be smooth sailing. Gillig had found the otter's bunny burrow and ended up in Kotir Cavern all right, just with no way out at the moment, but at least he was here. Gillig's daydream was suddenly broken as he was tossed about by waves created by the new waterfall. He had looked up in dread to see the evil, monstrous Gloomer coming quickly. Gillig and Skipper hadn't counted on Gloomer being loose in the caverns. It all seemed so simple before. In his mind's ear, Gillig could almost hear what the balladeer Gonf would sing about this new predicament. A three-hour ruse, a three-hour ruse. But things are truly getting rough, and the tiny otter is tossed. If not for the courage of this fearless one, this mission will be lost. This mission will be lost. The gloomer crashed on the shore of this uncharted hidden lake With Gilligan, no skipper too A million cares, but he's wise Now moving on with no rest Here in Gillig's exile Gillig saw the oncoming vile beast And knew he had to escape the gloomer Gillig was floating in the lake the maddened water rat was making right for Gillig. Gillig was blocked by Gloomer in most directions. He saw that perhaps he might be able to make it to the sandy beach. Gillig swam to the beach by the waterfall and ran out of the water. Gillig was in terror with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. He was on a sandy beach by the lake. There was a very large stalactite on its side, nestled deep within the sands. In front of him and across the lake, he saw a rocky shore against the wall of the cavern. The maddened water rat was making right for Gillig. Gillig swam to the smooth, rocky shore and made a dash out of the water, leaving a glowing wake that slowly faded into black behind him. Gillig was in terror with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. He was on a rocky shore by the lake. He saw a tall post and a closed gate with unlit stairs behind it going upward. In front of him and across the lake, he saw an island. Charging straight for Gillig was the very angry Gloomer. Gillig was blocked by Gloomer in most directions. 
he hoped he could make it to the island before the great rat made short work of him. Gillig was on the smooth rock shore of the lake. Gillig swam to the sandy island with a glowing wake left behind that soon went dark when he ran out of the water. Gillig knew whichever way he chose to go, he had to get away quickly. Gillig was in terror with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. He was on the sandy island at the center of the lake. He saw a beehive laying near the shore. In front of him and across the water was a slimy shore. Making right for Gillig was an enraged gloomer. Gillig quickly swam over to the slimy shore. Gillig was in terror with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. He was on a slimy shore by the lake. There were piles of carrion strewn about. In front of him and across the lake, he saw a jumble of rocks. The maddened water rat was making right for Gillig. Gillig was blocked by Gloomer in most directions. Perhaps he might be able to make it to the jumbles. Gillig was on the slimy rocks by the lake. The maddened water rat was making right for Gillig. Gillig swam to the jumble of rocks, leaving a glowing wake which got noticeably darker over time. Then he climbed out of the water. Gillig was in terror with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. He was at the bottom of a jumble of rocks by the lake. The ascending rocks looked like they could be climbed easily. Making right for Gillig was an enraged gloomer. Gillig climbed the rock jumble and reached its peak. Gillig was in terror with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. He was at the top of a jumble of rocks by the lake. There was a large rock leaning against the cave wall with a strange glow coming from behind it. On the other side of the jumbles from the slimy shore, he noticed a shallow area of the lake, beyond which was a ledge. The maddened water rat was making right for Gillig. Gillig was blocked by Gloomer in most directions. He thought he might make it to the shallows. Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks, there was a... Large rock, no larger than himself, angled against the wall of the cave. He also noticed the strange glow coming from behind the rock. <laughs> Making right for Gillig was an enraged gloomer. Gillig was running out of things to do with Gloomer so close as he would surely be caught by the monstrous great rat. Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks, there was a large rock no larger than himself angled against the wall of the cave. He also noted Gillig was in terror with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. Gillig was in such terror he was not able to take the time to look at his surroundings carefully. He would have to investigate after he got to someplace safe, if Gloomer did.
Gillig was blocked by Gloomer in most directions. He thought he might make it to the shallows. Gillig knew whichever way he chose to go. Gillig was running out of things to do with Gloomer so close, as he would surely be caught by the monstrous Great Rat. Gillig knew whichever way he chose to go, he had to get away quickly. Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks, there was a... large rock, no larger than himself, angled against the wall of the cave. He also noticed the strange glow coming from behind the rock. Gloomer raged towards the young otter, with claws at the ready and mouth agape. Gillig was in terror, with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. Gillig was in such terror, he was not able to take the time to look at his surroundings carefully. He would have to investigate after he got to someplace safe, if Gloomer did not catch him first. Gillig knew whichever Gillig was blocked by Gloomer in most directions. He thought he might make it to the shallows. Gloomer's nose twitched in the air. His head snapped in Gillig's direction and began moving toward his prey. Gillig knew whichever way he chose to go. He had Gillig was blocked by Gloomer in most directions. He thought he might make it to the shallows. Gillig knew whichever way he chose to go. He had to get away quickly. Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks. He entered the shallows. The water was below his knees and swirled around his legs. Gillig was in terror, with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. He was in the shallows of the lake. Across the water, he saw a ledge ascending against the cavern wall. Gillig swam to the ledge by the waterfall. As he pulled himself out from the water, he noticed he had left a trailing wake of glowing water that slowly grew dark. Gillig was in terror, with the monstrous water rat bearing down at him. He only had a split second to look around and notice a few things. He was on a ledge on the wall of the cavern overlooking the lake. To one side, the ledge sloped down to the shallows, and to the other, the ledge continued behind the waterfall. The mad Gillig turned sideways, then sidled behind the waterfall. Gillig was on a thin shelf of rock behind the waterfall. In front of him, the waterfall was fascinating and glowing from phosphorescence. The downpour of water and mist made it difficult to see around him, but Gillig could still see the lake through the waterfall. The space was narrow on either side of him. One side led out to the sandy beach, the other side went up to a ledge that continued along the cavern wall before sloping down into the shallows. Gloomer was nowhere to be seen. Gillig noticed a rare and unusual sight, the backside of water. A badger lord appeared in Gillig's thoughts, his soft voice like the whisper of an owl's wing beat in the night sky, proclaiming that you have earned the achievement title of Jungle Cruise Captain. Gillig was on a ledge behind the waterfall. He was facing the pouring fall, straining to see through the glows and the dense mists.
The wall had solid features. Nothing was going to break through it. Gillig realised that Skipper was not there to rescue him. The young otter was left to figure something out. Gillig was on a ledge behind the waterfall. He was facing the pouring fall, straining to see... Gillig turned around. Gillig was on a thin shelf of rock with his back to the waterfall. On either side of him was a narrow space, one leading to a ledge and the other to a large sandy beach. In front of him was a tunnel entrance, and behind him was the waterfall. Gloomer was nowhere to be seen. Gillig stepped into the opening. With Gloomer nowhere in sight and darkness before him, he dropped to his knees, overcome by weariness. The young otter was breathing heavily, his eyes flashing anxiously, having barely escaped the Gloomer's claws. His mind began to transport him back to the shouts of the otter crew in an equally terrifying feeling not so long ago. He let Stormfin get away! Kick him out of the crew! A disgrace to otter kind he is! That's enough! Next one who starts shouting will get none of me hot root punch till spring comes saviour, Skipper shouted. The yelling otters quieted instantly as he began to speak with full authority in his voice. Belay the gab and listen to me now. I'll be having a word with this un. He slapped a heavy paw on Gillig's shoulder, nearly sending him head over rudder before leading him away from the crew. A big, burly otter called Root stepped forward, stopping Skipper with a raised paw. I saw the whole thing, Skip. The dib and right froze as we were trying to wrangle the old pike. Finn had nearly got snapped up, and he spooked Stormfin off. I said I'll be talking to him, Skipper insisted firmly, as Gillig stared down at his own feet. This ain't the first time something like this has happened. Ruining your hot root punch is one thing, but this is Stormfin we're talking about now. What if that queen's got another water beast up her sleeve? What'll we do then? Root retorted, with paws clenched and in his gruffest voice. You've done nothing but train him up like your own. I've seen you stand by every mess he made, but the crew and I'd be thinking there needs to be more than a talking to this time. Skipper's face was grim as he waved his muscular tail for silence. Aye, I'll handle it, Root. Now keep the crew calm while I do. Root looked reluctantly at Skipper and finally nodded. Aye, Skip. Before Gillig could plead, he was led to Skipper's private quarters. The otter leader sighed heavily running a tired paw over his whiskers. Listen well, me hearty. I can't keep defending you, not with this un. You've passed the years of a dibbon. Tis time you stand on your own two paws. Old Skip ain't taking care of it. Gillig shook and closed his eyes, as if trying to ward off the memory. He had let Skipper and the crew down for the last time. Skipper believes in me, and I found another way to prove myself to the crew. I won't let him down again. Looking into the tunnel, he spotted a pumice rock upon the floor before the rest was swallowed into darkness. He had to find the scroll, but first he had to find a way to avoid Gloomer. He noticed an odd odour coming from the dark end of the tunnel. Gillig was in a tunnel behind the waterfall. He wanted to look at something, but it was either not visible to him, or he could not find anything about it. Gillig was in a tunnel behind the waterfall. Gillig had a thought, but he had no idea how to do it. Gillig took a deep breath and stared into the darkness. He remembered Skipper's words of encouragement when he felt afraid. It'll take more than that to stop a freebooter like you. Keep moving onward. Gillig was, in a Gillig was in a tunnel with the waterfall behind him and darkness ahead. Resting there was a large piece of pumice rock. He took a large piece of pumice. Gillig was in a tunnel behind the waterfall.
Gillig walked onto the ledge behind the waterfall. Gillig was on a thin shelf of rock behind the waterfall. In front of him, the waterfall was fascinating and glowing from phosphorescence. The downpour of water and mist made it difficult to see around him, but Gillig could still see the lake through the waterfall. The space was narrow on either side of him. One side led out to the sandy beach, the other side went up to a ledge that continued along the cavern wall before sloping down into the shallows. Gloomer was nowhere to be seen. Gillig knew when he left the safety of the mists behind the waterfall, Gloomer would be able to smell him very quickly. Recalling how before in the dark he had found a fire-starting kit, he wondered what could come from the darkness of the waterfall tunnel. Gillig was on a ledge behind the waterfall. He was facing the pouring fall, straining to see through the glows in the dense mists. He left a large piece of pumice. Gillig was on a ledge behind the waterfall. He was facing the pouring fall, straining to see through the glows in the dense mists. Gillig stepped into the opening. Gillig was in a tunnel with the waterfall behind him and darkness ahead. He was not carrying anything. Gillig was in a tunnel behind the waterfall. He was in front of a darkness. The only thing that remained was to enter it. Recalling how before in the dark he had found a fire-starting kit, he wondered what could come from the darkness. Gillig walked into the darkness. Straining to see, nothing was visible and the awful darkness was unbroken. All Gillig could smell was the overwhelming rotten stench. Gillig's nose twitched at the strange odour that filled his nostrils. Gillig felt around the darkness. He felt his paws being covered in some sort of powder. Gillig found his way back into the waterfall tunnel. Gillig was in a tunnel with the waterfall behind him and darkness ahead. On the ground he noticed some distinct yellow paw prints. He looked at the yellow paw prints and saw they came from the dark end of the tunnel. With a sudden gasp of recognition, he realized they were exactly the same size as his own foot paws. Gillig was in a tunnel behind the waterfall. The clumpy powder that clung to his paws was bright yellow. Gillig was in a tunnel behind the waterfall. He was in front of a darkness. The only thing that remained was to enter it. Gillig walked into the darkness. Straining to see, nothing was visible. Gillig rolled around in the cave and felt himself being covered in a powdery substance. Gillig walked onto the ledge behind the waterfall. Gillig was on a thin shelf of rock behind the waterfall. In front of him, the waterfall was fascinating and glowing from phosphorescence. The downpour of water and mist made it difficult to see around him, but Gillig could still see the lake through the waterfall. The space was narrow on either side of him. One side led out to the sandy beach, 
The other side went up to a ledge that continued along the cavern wall before sloping down into the shallows. Gloomer was nowhere to be seen. Resting there was a large piece of pumice rock. He took a large piece of pumice. Gillig was on a ledge behind the waterfall. He was facing the pouring fall, straining to see through the glows and the dense mists. Gillig stepped up to the edge of the ledge, the shallows just below him. Gillig looked all around and did not see Gloomer. It appeared his idea had worked. As long as he was covered in the foul-smelling sulphur, Gloomer would not be able to find him. It was time he sought out the exits of the cave. He recalled the dark stairs behind the gate, but even more interesting to him was the glow coming from behind the rock atop the jumble of rocks. Gillig was on a ledge overlooking the lake. There was a visible island surrounded by lake in the distance. The ledge continued along the cavern wall, sloping down into the shallows, which spanned to the jumble of rocks. The other end of the ledge led to a thin shelf of rock behind the waterfall. Gillig turned sideways, then sidled behind the waterfall. Gillig was on a thin shelf of rock behind the waterfall. In front of him, the waterfall was fascinating and glowing from phosphorescence. The downpour of water and mist made it difficult to see around him, but Gillig could still see the lake through the waterfall. The space was narrow on either side of him. One side led out to the sandy beach, the other side went up to a ledge that continued along the cavern wall before sloping down into the shallows. Gloomer was nowhere to be seen. Gillig stepped up to the edge of the ledge, the shallows just below him. Gillig stared in the direction of the lake. Somewhere within its depths, the gloomer lurked, waiting to catch his scent the moment his disguise washed off. He recalled the intriguing glow behind the rock on top of the jumbles and thought about how to get there while staying dry. Gillig was on a ledge overlooking the lake. There was a visible island surrounded by lake in the distance. The ledge continued along the cavern wall, sloping down into the shallows, which spanned to the jumble of rocks. The other end of the ledge led to a thin shelf of rock behind the waterfall. He threw the pumice rock into the shallows. It landed with a splash halfway between the shallows and jumble of rocks.
In the shallow water, Gillig could make out the top of the pumice rock sticking out. With a mighty leap, he jumped to the pumice rock in the middle of the shallows. He was standing on the pumice in the middle of the shallows between the waterfall ledge and the jumble of rocks. He jumped from the pumice rock in the shallows onto the jumble of rocks. Next to the lake, the jumble of rocks ascended against the cavern wall with Gillig near the bottom. Following the cavern wall was a shallow area of water that Gillig climbed the rock jumble and reached its peak. Gillig was near the top of a jumble of rocks which ascended against the cavern wall. Before him, he saw a glowing waterfall that provided light to the rest of the large cavern. To the left of the waterfall, a rocky ledge which hugged the cavern wall. Beside it lay a small shallow stretch of water leading to the jumble of rocks. To the other side of the waterfall lay a sandy beach where a large object stuck in the sand caught Gillig's eye. To the right of the beach and across an expanse of water lay a large smooth and rocky shore with a large post by the water's edge that ran up to the top of the cavern and out of sight. Beyond the post, the rocky shore rose upward, sloping high to where an iron gate rested. Through its bars, Gillig could make out a set of steps carved from the rock ascending upward to what must have been the castle above. There was a small sandy island in the middle of the lake. Beyond it and towards the back of the cavern, Gillig could see a mass of slimy rocks covered in heaps of carrion and a dark tunnel opening in the wall high above the carrion mounds. Roof holes were scattered about the ceiling, and water dripped into the lake from the hole Gillig had fallen through. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks, there was a large rock, no larger than himself, angled against the wall of the cave. He also noticed the strange glow coming from behind the rock. Once he surveyed his surroundings, Gillig decided he was exactly where he wanted to go. Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks, there was a large rock no larger than himself, angled against the wall of the cave. He also noticed the strange glow coming from behind. Gillig noticed the strange glow was coming from the small opening. Gillig thought of the glow coming from atop the jumble of rocks. What could be behind it? Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top, Gillig wanted to go behind the large rock but there was only enough room between it and the cavern wall for his paws. Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks, there was a... Gillig picked up the largest rock that he was able to loosen, but without the help of several otters, he could only lift the small stones. Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks, there was a large rock, no larger than himself, angled against the wall of the cave. He also noticed the strange glow coming from behind the rock. He tried to dig, but found his efforts to be in vain. Gillig was at the top of the jumble of rocks. At the very top of the jumble of extremely large rocks. He pushed the rock away, and it tumbled into the jumbles, exposing a small opening in the cavern wall. Gillig looked down to see he had uncovered a small tunnel. A strange warm glow poured out from it onto the jumbled rocks below his paws. He bent low to peer inside at what he had uncovered.
a badger lord suddenly manifested in his thoughts, as if some sort of dreamlike state. He spoke ever so softly, and declared that you have earned the achievement title of Amateur Scout.